Hello, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. I uh, just have a couple of things I'd like to bring up to you and, and hopefully get you to think about today. Um, hope you're all doing well, obviously uh, missing you, praying for you, and here to help in any way I possibly can. So I ask you to continue to remember us in your prayers as well um, as we continue to all, to all go through this and, and trying to make the best decisions that we possibly can. You know, I've been thinking about um, what it must have been like for the lepers in the first century, and I appreciate the fact that I may be the only one thinking about that uh, right now. And But I think there's some things that we have that are in common during this time uh, with that, and, and that's kind of what I would like to point out to you um, tonight. In Leviticus, the 13th chapter, is the description really of all the things that they had to do if they were struggling or dealing with leprosy, especially if they had the actual infection at the time. They had to dress the part. Uh, verses 45 and 46 will talk about the idea that not only they had to dress it, they had to have their hair and, and various things that had to go on. They had to yell out, unclean, unclean. And they had to live alone, it says. They had to be out of the camp. Can you just imagine that for a minute, the difficulty that would have come with that, just from a perspective of the, of the man by himself, a person by themselves, let alone if they were a family man, that they had a family to take care of. And the best thing that they could possibly do for that family was to get out. The struggles that that had to have brought on. And we can understand some of those things, staying away from people, uh, making sure that we're uh, not getting too close, all those different things that are, that are happening, um, and, and the concerns that obviously come with those things, and the difficulty that comes with those things. The physical struggles that they would have had with leprosy, and then on top of that, the emotional pieces that played into that. But that's the amazing thing about our Savior. Because you get to the New Testament and his dealings with those people that were struggling with this disease fascinate me. And, and obviously, there's some pieces of this that we're not able to do. And, and certainly, I think we all can understand that. But there are pieces of this story of Jesus um, dealing with them that I think are so powerful and we need to learn. And it's a good opportunity right now for the things that we are going through. If you'd open your Bibles to Luke, the 17th chapter, in Luke 17, you have the story of the 10 lepers, and Jesus is going to obviously heal them, but, and that, that's obviously the part we can't do, but there's a piece of this, that the, the description of Jesus that I love that I think is we need to make an application of. He says in verse 11, while he was on the way to Jerusalem, he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, 10 leprous men who stood at a distance met him, and they raised their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And so we see the social distancing here, right? They're not allowed to be close to anybody. They're yelling over to Jesus so he, he can hear them. There's an awesome piece of this, obviously, that they know who he is, which is just awesome. But verse 14 to me is just so powerful, not because they're cleansed, which obviously is the amazing part of this. But I just love the first few words here of this verse where it just says, when he saw them. Can you imagine during this time, how many people had walked by the lepers and they only viewed them to be lepers. It wasn't as though they were people or that there was something that they had um, to, to bring to the group as a whole. They were just unclean. And so people just be viewed them to be obstacles, unclean obstacles. We had a potential before all of this occurred to view people as obstacles. They were just in my way to get to where I want to go. And certainly that was a struggle for, for me sometimes, and I'm sure I'm not alone in that. But I know that there are times now that the temptation for a lot of us is to look at people as unclean obstacles. People that may be you know, dealing with these various diseases and the various uh, things that are going on, the viruses that are going on, instead of just people and opportunities. We have an opportunity to see them. That doesn't mean you change the rules and various things of, of trying to take care of yourself and be safe, it does mean that you view them to be people, that you view them to be opportunities, that there's opportunities for us to show them Jesus Christ in various different ways. We're blessed to be able to use technology to do this. We're able to do this safely and still sort of see each other and talk to one another and have an influence on one another. We're also able to do that to people that are not part of the church and have an influence on them. And we need to make sure that we're doing those things. You also have the opportunity in your neighborhood and how you act and how you react to various things. Make the most of those opportunities. See people. See the opportunities that are there. Don't look past them. Understand that Jesus Christ died for them too. 
And people need to hear about Jesus and have a relationship with him today, just as much as they did in the first century. And we have the opportunity to help them do that. You know, it's interesting to me, if you go over to Mark, the first chapter, as another story that Jesus is dealing with the um, lepers. Now, obviously, again, this is not the part that we're able to deal with. We can't heal them. But you imagine him, and, and I love how Mark describes this in, in Mark, the first chapter, that all the different healings and the various things that he's doing, this amazing works that he, he does. And you pick up in verse 40, it says, a leper came to Jesus beseeching him and falling on his knees before him saying, if you are willing, you make me clean. I know what you can do. I know what you're able to do. And it says of Jesus, moved with compassion, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Now, we can't do that part. And I just want you to think for just a second what it must have been like during this time for this man to be touched by Jesus. If people were standing around watching him touch a leper, how shocked that would have been for them. Or for this man. I mean, what was the last time a healthy person had touched him? You just imagine the emotions that were going on during this time, let alone the fact he's going to be healed. But his love for this man, his compassion that he had for someone that, quite frankly, everybody else tried to stay away from, which is understandable. He had compassion on him. And even during those times, you can have compassion on people and stay away, just like you can today. But it's understanding the opportunities that are before us for us to show compassion, to have compassion on other people. During this time, people are going through something that none of us have ever gone through before. And people are going to handle it differently. People in the church are going to handle it differently than people in the world. There are going to be people inside the church family that are going to handle it differently from other people in the church family. And we need to show compassion to one another and help one another and be patient with one another as we're all striving to do the exact same thing, which is to stay safe, to be smart, and to worship our God. And there's no doubt about that. And we have the opportunity to show compassion. And even more than that, we have the opportunity to let people see Jesus and his compassion. See, the amazing thing about this story, as we make application of it, is that Jesus has forgiven us or cleansed us of something greater than even the horrible disease of leprosy. He's forgiven us of these sins. I say this all the time, but if sin looked like leprosy on our body, if you could see it, people would be obeying the gospel all the time. But that's not the way that it works. What does happen, though, when we sin and we are continuing down that road of sin, is that we are viewed to be unclean, and we are out of the camp. And we have an opportunity to get back in. And it's the same thing that happened with this leper here in Mark, the first chapter. Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. And the awesome thing about our Savior is he is willing, just like with this man. He had compassion with him, and he cleansed him. It's the same that he does for you and I. He has compassion on us. He loves us so much, he was willing to die for us just to give us the opportunity. And we need to make sure that we're making the most of that opportunity. And immediately, as it says in verse 42, that leprosy left that man. And just like you and I, when we obey the gospel, when we have this relationship with him, immediately we are made clean. clean. And we need to make sure that we are thanking him for that. I love in Luke, the 17th chapter, you know, we talk about the, the nine that leave, the one that comes back. We need to be the one. We need to understand how thankful we need to be during this time even, even during dark times, times that are difficult, just to understand the blessings that we have of being a child of God. No matter what's going on in this world, no matter the struggles that we go through in this life, nobody can take away from you the fact that you are a child of the living God. You are a son or a daughter of God. Never forget that and thank him for it. Live for him. Have compassion on people. And make sure that you're seeing the opportunities that are before you, that people can see Jesus in us, that they can have a relationship with him, and that they can be thankful for all the things that he has done for us. I miss you all. I would love for you to leave comment if you have anything that you would like to add. But just continue to pray for one another, and I look forward to seeing you soon. You guys take care.